Hey Stoltz, do you know where Andy is? He's back there making rhino drives. Oh, sweet, thanks. Found ya. Oh hey, packing up rhino track drive boxes. We got a lot of people doing a lot of things around here. I don't usually do this, but if I can help out packing a box or two, I'm okay with that. I saw some discussion on Chief Delphi. I do want to talk to you a little bit about that. There's a couple threads on there having good discussion about the impact and importance of custom parts versus off-the-shelf parts. We've tackled it as a challenge over all of FIRST, especially FIRST Robotics, and we, we think that if we can make it easier for teams to compete and easier for them to put out a high-performance robot, then our job is, is done. If we can help decrease the amount of stress and impact of burnout on, on mentors and make it easier for teams to, to do this difficult design challenge along with the students, then our job is done. Our goal is to provide standard off-the-shelf parts that teams can use in order for them to compete at a high level within FIRST. That way, the high-resource teams are so far ahead of, of the low-resource teams and it creates more parity I believe within first. For instance, this this track drive system. We've we've had a lot of requests over the years for for track drives. This summer we had some some more requests, so we polished off an old design that we had. It happened to be good for this year's game. Now we're going to have hundreds of robots that have a simple, nice track drive system, as opposed to one or two who went to great lengths and much difficulty to get a track drive system working. Hopefully that explains my position on this uh, to make things clear that we're really out to help all the teams and out to make all the robots better so we can attract more teams and build the first community. Speaking of this first community, I got something to show you. Come with me. Okay, so one thing the first community thrives on and depends immensely on are volunteers. So I got a nice package yesterday from my good friend Jess Boucher and uh, I opened it but I, I decided to unbox it today. It says, Hi Baker, thought the office could use some greenery. Could you remind our YouTube friends to sign up for volunteering this year? I'm going to go sign up on VIMS today for the Toronto Regional, Week 1, Week 2, West Lafayette, Week 3, Indy. I have a team and we're competing on those two weeks. And then Week 4, I'm going to go to Colorado. Week 5, I'm not sure. Week 6, I'm going to the Pacific Northwest Championship in Portland. And Week 7, um, we're hosting an event here in Kokomo for the District Championships in Indiana. Do what I'm doing. Go into VIMS. Volunteer for your events. Make Jess happy. Thank you, Jess, by the way. It's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Chia Pet. Maybe we can check back on future episodes to see how this character is doing. First community, help us name Ninja Turtle Chia Pet. Give me some ideas on what to name him. Also, we have a, an engineer here at Andy Mark, Rick Pease, who's going to tell you about one of our new products that you might really want to use as you're debugging your robot at the end of build season. The sensor screen is valuable when you have an unknown issue going on with your robot and you suspect a sensor is the issue. So you can unplug it from your Robo Rio or whatever you have it set up to, plug it into this, and this will tell you what the sensors reading. Drive trains acting up and you're not sure if it's the encoder, you can plug it into here, roll it forward, see if the values are making sense. There's a bunch of sensors packed into this thing. With the SD card bootloader, we can always add more. Hear from a lot of customers that we really wish we had this one sensor, we can work on it and throw it in there and push an update. The sensor screen works with our current sensor, potentiometer, our rev pressure sensor, hull effect sensor, the Neverest encoder, the SIM coder, the US Digital Encoder, both 250 and 360, the ultrasonic sensor. So there's a PWM reader mode, so you can read the pulse width. There's an RPM mode, and there's also a flashlight with a dimmable feature. We'll see you again on Friday. Maybe we'll go out to lunch if we have time. So have a great week, and see you on Friday. But there was a disco mode, right? Yeah, so there's a undocumented feature called disco mode. Uh, you kind of do some button presses, there's a button combo cheat code, and then it goes into this mode.